we've been talking about the argument from design, which says that the existence of life in the universe is so unlikely, the only reasonable explanation for how we got here is that we were placed here intentionally by an intelligent mind. Premise one, the universe is either designed or the result of chance or the result of natural law or the combination of chance and natural law. Premise two, the universe is not the result of chance or natural law or the combination of both. Conclusion, therefore the universe is the result of design. Over the past couple of months, I've mentioned a whole list of conditions that all need to come together in order for life to be possible. And we've dove pretty deep into the details. But sometimes we get so focused on the nitty gritty, we lose sight of the big picture. So I want to spend this week tying everything together and wrapping things up. Look, I haven't even covered all the necessary criteria for life, but take a quick look at just those things that I have covered. Even if you have a universe with all the right laws and constants to support life, you still need a planet with all the following. One, that is in a spiral galaxy, which the overwhelming majority of planets are not. Two, that's not too close to the center of that galaxy, nor too close to the outside. Three, that's situated in between spiral arms. Four, that has a stable enough orbit around the center of that galaxy so it minimizes its risk of crossing over those spiral arms. Five, that orbits the right kind of star that's not located in a globular cluster. Six, whose orbit is just the right distance from that star to allow for liquid water to neither evaporate nor freeze. Seven, whose orbit around that star is stable and circular, so it maintains that proper distance. Eight, that's in a solar system with larger planets or an asteroid belt, or at least something to protect it from collisions with massive comets. Nine, that has just the right amount of tilt to support the seasons. Ten, that has just the right size moon to stabilize its tilt and control the speed of the planet's rotation so the days and nights are just the perfect length. 11, that's massive enough so it can support an atmosphere. But 12, that's not too massive so you can still have continents. None of that had to happen. There's nothing about the laws and constants of the universe that would require all these factors to come together and converge in one location to allow life to flourish on any planet. Even in a universe with all the right initial conditions, the odds are still overwhelmingly against life actually developing within that universe. Yet here we are. Why? Back in episode 44, I mentioned William Dembski's three requirements for arriving at the inference of design. Contingency, complexity, and specificity. Now our universe and our place within it is contingent. There's nothing about it that requires it to be the way it is. It's also complex. The odds are unfathomably against us finding a universe that has all the right laws and constants to permit life. Even if we did have such a universe, the odds are equally against us actually finding life within that universe. Finally, it's specified. This isn't like throwing a dart against a barn. While each individual point on the side of that barn is equally improbable, there's also nothing fundamentally different about them. The dart has to land somewhere, and if each point is fundamentally the same, it's really no remarkable feat that it landed at any particular place. But if we draw a bullseye on the side of that barn, now we've differentiated one particular point from every other point. Now if the dart lands at that one specified point, it is pretty remarkable. That's what we see with the universe. This particular set of laws, these particular constants, this particular location, this particular solar system, and this particular planet are all specified. The conditions we find ourselves in are differentiated from every other possible set of conditions. With these and only these conditions, life exists. With any other set of conditions, it doesn't. Over the next few weeks, we're going to keep looking at the design argument, but with a slightly different focus. Rather than looking to the big universe out there, we're going to go smaller and look inside biological organisms. But first, next week we're going to lay some important groundwork in order to refute some common skeptical objections, specifically by differentiating between origin science and operation science. Until then, God bless.